championship. No, no, no! Kristen Press, what did you do? 261 days, that's how long it's been since the U.S. Women's National Team last played. The Stars and Stripes tearing through some of international soccer's very best en route to yet another trophy in the days before everything ground to a halt. Well, today, finally, the reigning world champions return to the field, and in some style, it's a rematch of the 2019 World Cup Final. ESPN's coverage of U.S. soccer is brought to you by Volkswagen, and today that coverage takes us to Rat Verlech Stadium in Breda, Netherlands, for a showdown between the defending world champions and the defending European champions. It's the United States versus the Netherlands, a rematch of the last World Cup final. Alongside Julie Foudy, I'm Sebastian Salazar. Julie, we just mentioned it off the top there, 261 days <laughs> since we last saw this U.S. team in action. They are the number one Crazy. team in the world, of course. Uh, but game minutes, Julie, for this team have been really hard to come by in 2020. What can we reasonably expect today? You can, you can expect a ton of excitement. I mean, it is palpable and understandably so. That 261 days translates to eight and a half months since even having a game, Sebastian. So these players so badly want to run around. There is going to be a lot of frenzied activity. Of course, it is a rematch of the 2019 World Cup final played in Lyon, France. What a day it was. The fourth star added above the U.S. crest, Megan Rapino and Rose Lavelle, the goal scorer. Julie, you were in the stadium. What an experience uh, it must have been. Oh, and especially at that moment right there, Rose Lavelle putting it on her shoulders to make it two for the U.S. What a day. Their fourth star for the United States. 2-0 the final. Since then, there has been a coaching change. Vladko Andonovsky taking over for Jill Ellis late in 2019, but not that many changes in the 11. Nine of the 11 starters from that World Cup final. Julie in the 11 today. No Alex Morgan. She's replaced by Kristen Press. No Megan Rapino. She's replaced by Lynn Williams. And that number nine position has been up for grabs with Alex Morgan's absence due to preg pregnancy. And this is actually my Continental Tire Analyst corner because deservingly, Kristen Press and we're seeing her start there tonight, has been one that is popping into that nine. She does so well in the gaps and the seams. This is She Believes Cup against England. I mean, it doesn't get any prettier than that. And then again here, again, sitting in that nine, finding the gap, what she did against Japan, another She Believes Cup game. And you are going to see with Alex Morgan coming back into the picture post-pregnancy, Carly Lloyd coming back from injury, that this is going to be an interesting debate uh, for that three, for those three players in that number nine. And noting, as you see here, Kristen Press playing in Manchester United. She's playing in that nine position for Manchester United as well. Yeah, look at that list of players. Uh, Alex Morgan now with Tottenham Hotspur, Sam Hewitt and Rose Lavelle signing with Manchester City. Uh, and then the duo that signed with Manchester United, others as well. Uh, Julie, it really is uh, quite a trend of players going abroad to play here in 2020. We see the U.S. coming out for the national anthems. We'll be back in just a moment with first half kickoff, a rematch of the 2019 World Cup Final. U.S. Soccer presented... ESPN's coverage of U.S. soccer is presented by the Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport. Our coverage today takes us to Rat Verlech Stadium, home of NAC Breda, formerly of the Dutch Top Flight, for a match between the Netherlands and the United States. U.S. ranked number one in the world according to the latest FIFA rankings. The Dutch ranked fourth. Julie Foudy, Sebastian Salazar with you for today's broadcast. When we take a look at the Dutch starting 11, we should note Sarina Wichmann, their manager, won't be coaching the team today. She's had a pressing family commitment. We are told, Julie, that it's not COVID-related. Uh, she'll be replaced today in the technical area by her top assistant, Arjan Vurink. And the Netherlands going in a 4-3-3, similar to what we saw in that World Cup final. And actually, as I think you pointed out, Sebastian, six of the 11 are starting uh, from that World Cup final. And 
those of those six, five of them are in that front six. Jill Roort in for Miedema, who's missing, as we mentioned before, and Van Venendal back in goal after a recent injury. She was voted, many fans may remember, the best goalkeeper at the 2019 Women's World Cup. Yeah, important to note, Miedema's absence. Uh, she's injured her hip, plays for uh, Arsenal in England and the all-time top score for the Dutch national team. Opposite the Dutch today, the U.S. 11 under Vlatko, Andonovsky, and Julie. To say that Vlatko has a embarrassment of riches, probably an understatement <laughs> when we look at this 11. Yes, and that's going to be the same back four we saw at the World Cup. Nayer and goal, of course, as well. And uh, actually the same midfield as well for the United States with those three. Interestingly enough, Rose Lavelle in the starting 11 after not having played her last match at Man City due to a minor hamstring injury. We're told she will probably get a half today. And as we mentioned before, two of those front three difference from that starting 11 at the World Cup. Lynn Williams in the starting 11 after being one of the last cups cuts from the World Cup roster. And of course, the footballing world reeling from the death of Diego Armando Maradona earlier this week. Both teams observing a moment of silence. Diego Maradona passing away Wednesday in his native Argentina of heart failure. You have seen tributes from around the globe, and this match no different. Just about set to get underway. It's the United States and the Netherlands. Again, a rematch of the 2019 World Cup final, a game the U.S. won by a final score of 2 to nothing. Julie Foudy, Sebastian Salazar with you. And we are underway for the first time in some eight months the best women's national team in the world is back in action. U.S. in the all-blue kit, going right to left across your screen. The Dutch in their famous orange, going left to right. Crystal Dunn searching for Sam Mewis. U.S. first to possess. Sebastian, I know we deep. said that the players are excited to start. <laughs> I'm pretty excited as well, eight and a half months. Crazy to think it was uh, that long ago, Julie, that we were in Dallas for the end of the She Believes right. Cup, that final game against Japan. I know many people have said this, but it, it does seem like a lifetime ago. Tobin Heath, aggressive in her press, sliding it across and nearly an early goal for the Americans. Lynn Williams in the neighborhood, but couldn't apply the finishing touch. Encouraging sign, though, for the United States early on, only in this first minute. Tobin Heath getting in line, finding a little seam. You can see she's got plenty of time to try and pick that out. Lynn Williams just coming on the wrong side of that defender, trying to get near side of her when the ball was far side of her. Ball out of bounds on the far sideline. Throwing will go to the Netherlands. Again, we mentioned no Serena Wichmann on the Dutch bench today. Pressing family commitment has taken her away from the team. However, Ariane Wurink, her top assistant in charge. Wichmann, of course, will take over the English national team after the upcoming Olympics. Lavelle for Abby Dahlkemper now. Kelly O'Hare on the far side. Silky touch from Lavelle. Give and go with Williams. Long switch, headed down. 
and sorry van Vanendal. Goalie for the Dutch, one of the stars, as you mentioned, Julie, of their run to the 2019 World Cup final. She's actually missed the last two European qualifiers for the Dutch, out with a hip injury, Van Venendal. Just back into the lineup, and they're pleased to have her, one of the most experienced on the team, the oldest on the team at 30 years old, which Seems quite young by our U.S. standards. Headed down beautifully by Lynn Williams. Touch escapes Rose Lavelle, who does a nice job pressing ball out of bounds for a throw into the Dutch. Four minutes into this game, really just the one chance early on from a Tobin Heath cross. Daniela van der Donk, the number 10 for the Dutch, sprays it wide, Lynn Wilms. Lynette Bierenstein applying the pressure on Becky Saubrun. The veteran captain there sees it out of play. And every indication from Vlatko Andonovsky is even though these players are not 90 minutes fit, and understandably so given all the challenges of COVID and this year, he said in practice it has been amazing to see the commitment, of course, the mentality, how well they've been playing given all the challenges they face this year. Van de Donk loses out to Ertz. Dutch maintained possession. You saw in Blackko Andonovsky's jersey the message Black Lives Matter. Players wearing a similar message on their warm up uniforms today ahead of the match. Give you a little more context on that later in the broadcast. And also check the players' social media channels. Players releasing a unified statement in the hours before kickoff. Dutch now with share of the possession. Ball served into the box. Jill Ruert, the closest to it. But Becky Sauerbrunn wins out. And the Americans take over. Julia Dimitrescu leading an all-Romanian crew as the center ref tonight. Six-hour time difference between the United States and the Netherlands, just after 6.30. 44 degrees Fahrenheit in Breda, overcast. Jackie Hrunen, the captain. Plaza trade with Manchester United. Teammate with Kristen Press and Tobin Heath. In what is the Women's Super League? Top flight over in England. Lika Martins. I think the challenge for the United States, too, you're playing a very technically gifted team in the Dutch. Van Veenendal under pressure. Manages to find Vilms on the near sideline, but Crystal Dunn there. Now Tobin Heath in a one-on-one. -on -one. Draws contact from behind and draws the foul. Dangerous set piece coming up here, Julie, for the United States. Yeah, and a perfect example of just what I was going to say. They have to pick their moments to press because obviously they're not fit to high press as much as they'd like to. Here you see the press from Dunn giving it up to Tobin Heath, winning the ball in a great territory, and now a dangerous set piece that comes with that. Heath standing over the ball. It's Van Vanendal sets up her wall. Seven minutes into this one. Six targets for Heath in the penalty area. Driven to the spot, chested down, and only half cleared away. Heath will get another crack at it, this time with her left foot. Van Vanendal clears. Still not to safety for the Dutch. Now Grunen. Jill Roark, the number 19, leading the line for the Netherlands in the absence of Vivian Miedema. All-time top scorer for this national side. 
What a huge loss for the Dutch. Not having Miedema out with a hip injury. O'Hara, one on one, into the penalty era. O'Hara to the line, chips it across. Headed out for a corner kick. Miedema, the leading scorer in both the Women's Super League last season and the Champions League. And this is something you're going to want to see, that the U.S. is going to want to see from those outside backs all day long against the Dutch. Both teams setting up in that 4-3-3 system. Lots of room on the flanks. Crystal Dunn checking short. Should be an in-swinger from Heath. Well struck. Knocked down in the box. Ertz there. The Dutch have scuttled it away and now can break. No problem, the counter-attack for this American defense. Heath clipping it forward. Van Beinendahl beats press to it, if not. The Americans may have been in. Nine minutes down here in the Netherlands. First U.S. game since March of this year. And they ran through England, Spain, and Japan en route to the 2020 She Believes Cup title. First game for the United States outside the country since the World Cup final in Lyon. Press heads it in behind. Lynn Williams a touch. Thought she'd earned a corner kick instead. It'll be a goal kick to the Netherlands. And of the 23 players brought in to this training camp, 14 in the NWSL, seven, of course, playing in Europe two in college and you can see the difference obviously with NWSL having some of its challenges that had the challenge cup it had the fall series but those 14 players that are in the NWSL not all of them did the challenge cup not all of them knew the fall series some didn't do both for various reasons and so how many minutes with six subs you can get out of these players is something that Black Wandanovsky has to pay great attention to. Julie Ertz takes a shot in the middle of the field. Don't call Vandedonk. it a friendly. <laughs> Vandedonk coming in here. Yeah, I think Vandedonk wanted the foul first, and when she didn't get it, Took justice into her own hands. <laughs> Dahl Kemper. Searching for Williams. Williams, one of the few players that has really worked her way into this team since the last World Cup. Her role continues to grow. If you've not seen Lynn Williams play much before, she's fast, and that'll come out on your screens at any moment. <laughs> I mean, the beauty of Lynn Williams, too, of course, Sebastian, is she, with that pace, she stretches that back line, opens up a little more space for your midfield to play into. I was always very appreciative of very fast forwards as a midfielder. Thank you very much for creating a little more space for us. Ertz nearly had Heath picked out. Well done from Vilms with the interception. Foonen back into the middle. Double team now. And the Dutch happy to keep possession. A very little penetration of the American line so far. 12 minutes in, still 0-0. Not all that different from the World Cup final, Julie. It was a game that had a lot of tension until finally mm. the U.S. broke through. Yeah, and not until the second half in that game. A lot of tension in that first half. That's what I remember from that day. Films with time and space. Ahead to Hrunen. She's got acres of green in front of her. Hrunen charging at the American defense. The captain slips it wide for Bierenstein. To the back post. Lika Martins, ever so dangerous. The 11 for the Dutch. 
Shannon a Spitzer. One of the more experienced players on this Netherlands side. Roared. And that gap where you saw Hruna in, in between, and you see with those three midfielders, sometimes they're pushing Mewis and Rose Lavelle both high. And there becomes this gap behind them with only Ertz in behind between the back line and that midfield. Amazing, Julie, you can hear the communication from the back line, just to each other, really. You could hear yep. instructions being called out there for Kelly O'Hara. One of the few benefits of, One of the having silver these games, lines. yeah, in right. empty stadiums. Of no fans. Dahl Kemper heads it back to Alyssa Nair, getting her first action of the night. Chicago Red Stars goalie. Heath playing centrally. Press wide, ahead for Mewis. Mewis looking for a cross. Anik Nowen cutting it out at the near post. Corner kick coming up for the U.S. Such a hard run to track coming out of midfield. Sam Mewis, we've seen her do this so well with Manchester City as well. Given a lot of freedom to get forward, of course. Second corner kick of the match for the United States. Keep an eye on the near post. Heath, the in-swinger, nodded clear. Sauerbrunn for Dunn. Heath caught in a corner, working against Martins. And a good one-on-one -on -one challenge there, though. Lika Martins grabbing her right knee. And this is a real serious concern, not just for the Dutch national team, also for Barcelona, where she plies her trade at the club level. Martin's 117th appearance with her national team, 46 goals, her count so far. Good to see her back up and running around. Heath drives it again to the near post. Janssen there to head it away. Williams flicks it wide. Can he keep it in? Yes, to the near post. Press fighting. Martins fends her off and sends it forward. Again, Becky Sauerbrunn first to it. U.S. pressure causing all sorts of problems for the Dutch. Lavelle on that left foot. Oh, she wanted the through ball for press. Maybe that Julia sign of players who haven't gotten to work together a lot in the last year. Yeah, I know, and that's that's. An, I mean, on top of all the other things we've listed of challenges, is they just haven't had time. I mean, that was one of the things that Vlad Kwandanovsky press coming again. Crystal Dunn, Mewis on that side, giving the high press there to win the ball back. But that was one of the other challenges Vlad Kwandanovsky talked about. Is you know. As a new coach, you have so many things you want to layer in and add and build upon. And he said, but first we had to actually take two steps back before we could even start marching forward. And that's with the October camp, but you didn't have any European players in in that October camp. So really the first time he's had his full group together here in Holland since the She Believes Cup. They did do is we discussed with him a ton of Zoom calls, which everyone can relate to. I wonder if they called him Mr. Andonofsky like an elementary school teacher. I can just imagine, <laughs> you know? Ball takes a deflection, and Lynn Williams has a chance here. Cuts it back onto her right foot. Williams, a shot just over the bar. He's lucky with this little bounce here. Press realizing she's 
possibly in an offside position. Just holds. Lynn Williams, nice little cut just to get a little gap. All she needs is a half window. So close. You can see exactly where she wants that one. Yeah, that ball was dipping, too. Dutch really pinned deep in their own half for most of the opening 18 minutes. U.S. not looking too much worse for the wear for the time off. Of course, as you mentioned, Julie, it hasn't been totally time off. NWSL has had its seasons. And many of these players now playing in Europe to get minutes. Berenstein, the interception. She plays for Bayern Munich. Intense pressure here from the U.S. <laughs> And you can hear them say, let's go, let's go. Picking their moments when they do want to press. There is space in behind the American back line, but the Dutch have been able to find it yet. More pressure now from the far side. Lynn Williams closing in on Van Vanendahl, who has little choice but to send it to the sideline. Dunn wins the header, and the Dutch will get a moment of pause to gather possession. And those of you expecting to see Serena Wiechman on the sideline for the Dutch, that's her top assistant, Arjen Budink, takes over today. Wiechman away on a pressing family commitment. Wiechman days with this Dutch team are numbered. She's already accepted the job to take over for Phil Neville in England come September of 2021. Of course, she took this Dutch team to the 2017 European Championship on home soil. The 2022 Euros will be in England. And what Wiegmann has done with this team, I mean, their ascension has been quick. 2015 World Cup was their first. O'Hare, one-time ball into Williams, had a crack at it. Her mind somewhere between a touch and a shot, and the ball trickles out of bounds with no threat. Kelly O'Hara, one of a growing number of Stanford Cardinal in this lineup. Who had me mentioning Stanford before Julie? <laughs> U.S. Women's <laughs> National Team bingo. Well, then we should stay on this, Sebastian. <laughs> Seven players on this 23-player roster are from Van Vandendal making a mess of that goal kick. Nearly found herself in real trouble, able to scuttle it away. Go ahead, Julie, sorry. Yes, seven players from Stanford University. It's fantastic. Usually you're saying that about University of North Carolina players, so sorry, Hanson. Finally, I can say it about Stanford. <laughs> Those Lavelle turning away from pressure. Good switch. You hear Vladko screaming, keep going, Dunny. That's Crystal Dunn on the overlap. Dunn, one on one. Look at those moves. Done with the left-footed cross. Headed to the top of the box. Lavelle on a right-footed volley. Lavelle again, back to goal. O'Hara running out of time and space on the far side. I have to imagine, though, in these first 15, if you're Vlako Andonovsky on the sidelines, you're pleased. They're pressing, they're winning the ball, they're winning it in their attacking third. They've got a rhythm. And what you're seeing is Bierenstein, who's playing right wing for the Dutch, having to do a lot of defending. Martin's on the other side as well. Films the right back for the Netherlands has had tons of time and space out here on this flank. Again on it, Jackie Grunen. Grunen, Bierenstein. 
Looking for Roard, couldn't find her. And this U.S. defense all over every Dutch attack. Anik Nouwen to her counterpart in central defense. Dominic Janssen. One time ball. Driven in towards Nair. She comes off her line, collides with Becky Sauerbrunn, but able to collect cleanly. Little bit better rhythm from the Dutch. I've been watching some of their European qualifiers in the last couple months, and they've been playing against such a, a low block. And teams like Kosovo, Estonia, winning 6 7 0. Here's that speed from Williams down the right flank. Now cuts it back. Had a couple options. And the rebound fell to Press, who fires well wide. Nice little rebound. Williams with her speed, stretching that defense. Janssen trying to stay with her, and that's the rebound to Press. She just mishits a little bit. Good positioning to pick that up. But that's a handful, and Lynn Williams with that pace. Kristen Press for 139th U.S. national team appearance. Sitting on 58 goals. Roard. Fires wide for Martins. Lika Martins. Shaking off an earlier injury. Films. Vandendonk. Look at Tobin Heath. The high winger in your 4-3-3 all the way back. Doing the defensive work. She'll be needed here. Americans unable to clear their lines. Now a turnover. Can the U.S. break through Sam Mewis? Mewis still on it. Picks out Rose Lavelle. First touch good. Falls to Williams. Back for Lavelle, and she was offside. The AR putting the flag up. A couple I near misses that, there. That World Cup final, Sebastian, when Rose is coming through that middle there, as she did on that long run to score the second goal. Black going to Noski, two time NWSL champion with the now defunct FC Kansas City, two time NWSL coach of the year as well, actually got his professional coaching start in the indoor game, was a coach of the year at the Major Arena Soccer League. Born in the former Yugoslavia, now what is North Macedonia. He became a U.S. citizen in 2015 and now leads this U.S. women's national team. Sauerbrunn and Dahl Kemper. Such a duo in the heart of the American defense for so long. Sauerbrunn wearing the captain's armband today. This is Crystal Dunn under pressure. Twenty-seven minutes into this match between the United States and the Netherlands. First game for the U.S. women since mid-March, she believes, cup against Japan. Frisco, Texas. Julie, we did that game in a stadium full of people. Something Gosh. you can hardly imagine now. I, I, and I remember that day I think it was March 10th, right? It was about a day before the whole sporting world shut down, saying to each other, wow, this feels weird. Like, should we be in a stadium full of people right now? <laughs> and then the very next day, yeah, the, it all closed down. Yeah, the U.S. travel ban literally came down, I believe, during our broadcast. Mm. Thought we were going to have to stay in Frisco for a few months. 
Look at that. There's an angle you don't always get. Yeah, and I'm sure we some never coaches get that might angle. not like. <laughs> Can we go oh, back man. to that, that please, is, on the world By the way, this is, this is not an ESPN <laughs> truck doing it, so don't, don't get mad at ESPN. <laughs> We're living off a of world feed. Corner kick coming up for the Dutch here. Nair stays in. Mewis wins the header cleanly. Clattered into, no foul called. O'Hara, right around Berenstein. Dahl Kemper to launch the American attack. Poor switch though, picked off by Spitza. No problems. Julie Ertz wins it right back. This is amazing with these boom mics. You could just hear him say it again. Sit, sit, sit. Not let's go, let's go, let's go. And typically what triggers that is Rose or Sam in midfield. And then Vlaco said for that front line, sometimes Tobin Heath will trigger that press. Heath through, press, one on one, Christian press. Puts it in, but the offside flag is up. Oh, such a beauty of a ball, though, from Heath. Just wow. taking a look. Wow, that is close. Oh, Heath just perfectly lays that in. Look at the pace on that ball. Any harder, Van Vanendal is there to pick it up. Oh, that seems a little bit harsh. Well done by Press, too, to finish that one off. And really a beautiful connection there between Heath and Press. It was offside by the slightest of margins. Really hard to tell from the angle we had. Sauburn chasing this one down. Netherlands trying to apply some pressure themselves. Bierenstein forces a bad pass and the Dutch take over deep in the American end. Half hour down, still scoreless between these two teams as it was when they met in Lyon. In the summer of 2019, the World Cup final. It wasn't until the second half that the U.S. broke through. Janssen plays for Wolfsburg, swings it wide. More possession here as the half wears on for the Dutch. Still very little danger. Created by the number four ranked team in the world. Oh, nice touch from Dunn. Mewis now. Ahead for Dunn, she's on side, flag stays down. Dunn into the box, finds Mewis. Can she turn? Heath Williams. Oh, such a nice sequence, though, for the United States. All started from that left back position of Crystal Dunn. Winning it, breaking free, on side, as you see there. Win released. Oh, I think they could have been a little bit more unselfish around the box, though, and cranked one earlier. Heath herself. Fans of the United States will be quite familiar with seeing Crystal Dunn at the left back spot. We should note, uh, she plays very different roles for her club teams. Of course, she was the NWSL top scorer one year with the Washington Spirit. And with the North Carolina Courage, effectively plays a number 10 role on what you could argue, Julie, is, is the best club team in the world. Yeah. You, you easily could argue that with the talent they have. But that's what Dunn has always brought, such versatility. Her opposite number, the right back O'Hara pushing forward, misfires on the pass. Of course, uh, Krista Dunn now with Portland Thorns just acquired. Interesting to see how she's used in the Pacific Northwest. Johnson misfires, Williams right there. 
Well done by Williams with the angle she's taken to press too. Trying to make sure that they don't, they aren't able, the Dutch, to find that weak side wide player. Quick note, the MLS playoffs continues Sunday with another doubleheader. First, Orlando City hosting the New England Revolution. That's a three Eastern time kickoff on ABC, followed by Columbus Crew taking on Nashville SC at eight Eastern on ESPN. We should note Columbus has had a slew of positive COVID-19 tests that could uh, impact that game. But as of now, it is still on. Those matches streaming live, of course, for you as well on the ESPN app. Oof. Classy Megs there from O'Hare on Martins, huh? <laughs> Who's the attacker? Who's the defender in that sequence? <laughs> Martins looking for revenge. Not going to get it on O'Hara there. So she has earned a corner kick for this Dutch side. Continuing to grow into this match. More and more dangerous as we progress towards a halftime whistle. Julie, the Dutch sending a lot of numbers up on these corner kicks. You can tell they want to take advantage of the few forays they're having deep into the yeah, American exactly. end. exactly. When you don't have much of the ball, which they're not used to, set pieces become critical. Heath deflected it back in towards her own goal, eventually cleared. Sloppy touch puts Vandedonk into some trouble. And she loses out to Abby Dahlkemper. Press with her back to goal, drops it for Heath. Oh, what a turn. Brilliant little flick, too, to keep it alive. Now Mewis. Williams with space. Recipe for trouble if you're the Dutch. Williams pushing it into the box. It's so brilliant with the boom mics that they pick up. I mean, with no fans, you can hear O'Hara screaming, take her, take her. And geez, if you're Lynn Williams with that speed, why not? I would say that to her every time she has a moment to face up. 10 minutes to go in the first half, fourth corner kick so far of the game for the United States. Kelly O'Hara up into the penalty area. The U.S. sending numbers forwards as well. Left-footed service, O'Hara nearly there. Mewis and Berenstein collide. And the U.S. is going to get this call. And as a result, get a very dangerous set piece in the 36th minute. Berenstein does not like it. Clumsy, wasn't it? And unnecessary, really in giving up such a dangerous set piece, which the U.S., as every opponent knows, is so good on for decades. What do you think, Julie? Is this in shooting range or just outside it? No, I think Tobin yeah, Heath yeah. Is, is willing to give this a whirl for sure, but you can see her looking to that far post. Heath, the chip, and this time Sam Ewis, the guilty party in the box, she's called for the foul, and the Dutch escape for the moment. Jill Roark filling in for Vivian Miedema today. Miedema, number one of the top players in the world, out with a hip injury. Coming off a great season for Arsenal in the Women's Super League. A <laughs> great few seasons. Yep. <laughs> top score, top score, top score every year. <laughs> That's a woman who knows how to bang in goals. 
And I believe it's 70 goals and 91 national team appearances. Quite a strike rate. Not the strike there that Kristen Press wanted. The one hopper, no problem for Van Vanendal. Martins loses out to Williams. Press now turning. Looking through for Heath. Van Bainendal <laughs> saw it coming and sniffed it out. It is a nice little look, though, that ball in. Heath with cheeky little back flick. Press, you can see exactly what she wants out of it. We've seen her hit that many times. Just doesn't get a hold of it. Williams lumps it ahead for Heath. Great first touch. Now back to goal. Mewis. Mewis. I think, too, Sebastian, one of the things they're going to talk about at halftime is, okay, it, you are going to get some fresh legs in. We know that they have players available on the bench. You have Alex Morgan that is available on the bench. You have uh, Sophia Smith is available. Christy Mewis is available. So they will be, there will be some fresh legs that come in, of course. But how much can you continue to press given it's been 261 days and picking your moments? Because I, the, the U.S. has been incredibly successful when they do have the press in place. And in any other time, they would continue to do that. But I'm not sure if you have the legs to do it, given the circumstances. Van der Donk sprays it wide. Hoonan. Sauerbrunn first to it. Vladko Andonovsky taking over. Fall after the World Cup. Dutch now with the ball, trying the American right side. Slip between Dahlkemper and O'Hara, but Dahlkemper eventually clears away only as far as Van Donken. Nowen. Martins. Spitza. Martins turns it over. Break for the U.S. Here comes Kristen Press. Wide for Lavelle. On the left. Golasso! Rose Lavelle in the 42nd minute makes it 1-0 United States. To get any prettier than this, and I know we always talk about the goals that Rose Lavelle can score, uh, but to get forward on this in a break, right away, Rose Lavelle seeing, I have a moment here, I can get in. Oh, uh, what a beauty. A little cut, finds a little bit of space. Ah, uh, so nice. And there is the magic of what this young player can do. Van Bainendal reduced to a spectator. The Dutch looking for a quick equalizer. Nair at the near post. And, and Rose Lavelle has really had some limited minutes. Hasn't been starting a lot of games for Man City. Hadn't played in that last game with a little nagging hamstring injury. Wasn't sure if she was going to be able to start. Press. 
Looking for Heath. Did not miss by much. Nearly a second for the Americans just before the half. And again, just a little window, finds a little gap. Boy, Van Vandendal looks heated, huh? Every time the ball goes out of bounds, certainly when it went in her net, she turned and yelled at her defenders. You speak any Dutch, Julie? <laughs> A reminder, Serie A is uh, now on ESPN News Sunday, 6.25 a.m. Eastern time kickoff. Lazio led by Ciro Immobile will take on Udinese from the Stadio Olimpico in Rome. All Serie A matches the season stream live on the ESPN app. Tobin Heath on her left foot, straight at Van Veenendaal, who fumbles it and gathers just before it crossed the line. The Americans oh. really close to a second there. Oh, and that one again picked up. You see three, four, five blue jerseys around the Dutch, picking it up for Heath. Uh, and that's one that really should be put away. Imagine going in 2-0 at this half. That's lots of time. Oh, good save by Van Vanendal, but that is one that you would typically see Tobin Heath put away. Crystal Dunn still on it, right-footed rocket. But straight at Van Vanendal, who gathers on the second attempt. This Dutch side almost seems to have forgotten. There's 45 minutes and a half and not 40. The last five minutes have been all U.S. pouring forward. Closing in on a goal that would give them a far more comfortable advantage. Spitz again. The pressure from Heath problematic. This is going to be Lynn Williams by a mile. Williams into the box. And again, her effort over the bar. Williams getting into all sorts of dangerous opportunities so far, unable to finish. You know, the amazing thing, too, is when you look at this Dutch team, they've all been playing, right? They're playing, in, obviously, in Holland. They're playing all over Europe. They've got three in Germany, five in England, two in Spain. And so they have been getting their matches. That was a big concern for this U.S. team is that they are going to be played in. They're going to have the minutes. Yet, what you're seeing in this first half is a very different story. It's been a lot of the United States. The Dutch lucky to get out of the, that one, just down one goal. And that one goal coming courtesy of Rose Lavelle. Here's one more look at it. A bit of beauty. Now she beats Sari van Vanendal to give the U.S. a 1-0 lead. U.S. Soccer presented by Volkswagen. Through 45 minutes, the U.S. leads the Netherlands 1-0. ESPN's coverage of U.S. Soccer is presented by the Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport. From Breda, Netherlands, the United States, Leads the Dutch 1-0. There you see Alex Morgan warming up at the half. This is from before the game, something we mentioned earlier in the broadcast. The entire team wearing Black Lives Matter on their warm-up jackets. Of course, in the United States, it's been a year full of discussion on racial inequality. The players have all shared a message on social media. I'll read you a brief part of that message. Quote, today we wear Black Lives Matter to affirm human decency. We protest against racial injustice and police brutality against black people. We protest against the racist infrastructures that do not provide equal opportunity for black and brown people to fulfill their dreams, including playing on this team. You can check out the full statement on uh, any of the players' social media channels. Julie, uh, it's not anything uncomfortable uh, for this team to find themselves in the role of athlete activists, is it? No, and, um, and it's something that I think they do remarkably well. And uh, I know it runs through the blood of all of us who played on, you know, for this team. And it's, it's uh, wonderful to see. They talk about we love our country and it's an honor to represent America, but we also feel that our country was founded on liberties and freedom that we should extend to everyone. And they're fighting for that every day. We've had some changes here at the half. There you see the aforementioned Alex Morgan is in. So I believe she's that was replaced. Charlie, too. We saw on the stands <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, her, her, her daughter born May 7th. Uh, Kristen Press, the player that Morgan has replaced. 
Um, Julie, we should also mention, uh, we haven't talked about it yet, but the equal pay case, uh, as far as athlete activism, and this, this team has really been uh, centered around. Morgan on it here, try to slip it ahead towards Heath. Got to go back to March 2019 when the U.S. women sued the U.S. Soccer Federation over gender discrimination. In March of this year, you remember the Federation got lots of criticism for their legal approach uh, in that case. In fact, Carlos Cordero, the president, eventually ended up resigning. Uh, in May, though, the women's national team case took a blow. A judge ruled against their equal pay claim. Uh, a decision, by the way, you should note the team vowed to appeal. The judge in the case did rule that the national team's Title VII discrimination claim, which is uh, effectively about unequal working conditions, could still um, go to trial. But Julie, it is worth noting, uh, 20 months on from that original lawsuit, this is uh, still without resolution. Yeah, and, and really hasn't moved much. There hasn't been much discussion yet between the players and U.S. soccer, and so it is sitting and waiting, um, and hopefully will get resolved soon. And then, not to mention, there's going to be a new CBA in 2021. So you got that whole negotiation starting again as well. So Morgan, the loan change then at the half. Replacing Kristen Press, who did notch the assist on Rose Lavelle's beauty of a first half goal. And we talked about the U.S. team having not played in 261 days. For Alex Morgan, Let's put it in perspective as well. 509 mm. days for Alex Morgan since her last game. That's 16 months and 21 days. And we know what that last game was, the World Cup final against this very team. I think it's worth noting too, Julie, uh, Vladko Andonovsky has mentioned plenty of times the commitment that it's taken uh, from Alex Morgan, given all that she's been through personally this year, uh, the pandemic as well, to move to England just to get games with Spurs uh, has really been a huge part of her getting back into this conversation. Yeah, he was so pleased that obviously she took Charlie with her, her daughter, and I mean, and that's a, you know, a huge decision to make with a newborn and said, okay, we're going to make this work. Ernie Stewart, knowing this stadium very well, having played here for many years. A longtime player for NAC Breda, formerly of the Dutch top flight, no longer. And Veenendal's goal kicks throughout the match, really, have been awfully short. It's created some problems, but here it leads to a break for the Dutch. Ball slipped through for Martins. O'Hara, oh, great challenge at the last second, probably one she didn't need to make as the offside flag goes up. <laughs> O'Hara thought that she was the one getting called for the foul. You could see the reaction from her, not pleased, because she got a lot of that ball with that great tackle. Mewis, O'Hara wide open. O'Hara still on it. Wanted Morgan at the penalty spot. Service falls short. O'Hara trying to go one on one around Martins. The Dutch 11 wins that. O'Hara ahead of Martins here. Ball flicked up for Morgan. Morgan back to goal. On top of Alex Morgan trying to get back from her pregnancy, she also had a little bit of a banged up knee in Tottenham, and so really limited minutes in these last three games for Tottenham. Finally getting some minutes, though. It's worked her way up to 45 minutes there. Morgan's 170th appearance for the Stars and Stripes. Fifth corner of the game for the U.S. to the near post, and again cleared away by the Dutch. Tobin Heath, one on two, finds Dunn. Dunn's cross deflected out of bounds by Danielle Van de Donk. Crystal Dunn so active from that right side and it's so important for her to continue to stay active in this second half because then you see that front three for Holland having to track all the way back into their own defensive third. Tobin Heath, left-footed in-swinger. 
Ertz at the near post. She does win it this time. Heath. Spits a big touch there. Otherwise, Kelly O'Hara was lurking. Now she'll have to hustle to get back. Dutch on the counter. Bierenstein, full flight. Uh, Becky Sauerbrunn reads it perfectly. 35-year-old center back and today the captain of this U.S. team well in command. Williams gathering ahead of steam. Pushes it past Vilms. Williams pumps the brakes. Hurts touch deflected. Lynn Williams on that left side. Now for the United States, Vilms. Young defender, number 15. Only 20 years old for the Dutch. Lynn Williams trying to run at her because Tobin Heath had a ton of success in that in the first half as well. Player down, Jackie Hroon and the captain for this Dutch side. Shanice van der Sanden, one of the many threats the Netherlands can bring off the bench. Looks like she got the wind knocked out of her. Rune taking a while to shake this one off. See if it draws a change. Arjen Vudink, the man in charge today. Serena Fiegman uh, called away at the last minute for a pressing family commitment. Dutch Federation was sure to remind us that it wasn't COVID-19 related, so a bit of good news there. Just a bit of housekeeping in the 53rd minute, and we're back underway. U.S. leads 1-0, goal in the 41st minute from Rose Lavelle. If you haven't seen it, you can imagine it. She had time on her left foot, and it was a beauty. <laughs> Something we've absolutely seen from her yeah. before. And the Dutch have seen from her before. I mean, they must have nightmares about that every time she touches the ball. No! <laughs> Janssen. Again, the Dutch, few options, but to go backwards. And Vienendahl's clearance yet again puts her team into trouble. Heath coming back from an offside position. And a good visual of, you can see the U.S. playing in that middle block, and then all of a sudden Tobin goes and the rest of them come. That's the trigger. And they're having such success when they do go because they're organized, they're going numbers, they're playing those two tens. So Rose and Sam both step. An opportunity here for the Dutch. Vanderdonk goes backwards. Van Donchen. Spitza. Roar. Forced backwards by Lavelle. Van Donchen. Spitza. Here are the instructions from the near sideline coming in for this U.S. side. Now one picks out Bierenstein. 
Dutch retaining possession. Brunen for Martins. Martins one on one with Julie Ertz. Ertz wins the battle, but not the war. Corner kick coming up for the Dutch. Better play by the Dutch, holding the ball, keeping the ball, making the United States chase more, and that's how you get them more fatigued. The Dutch know coming into this game, they haven't been playing a ton of minutes, but they just haven't been able to get them chasing. Five targets, a sixth at the near post for the Netherlands. Ball whipped in, Mewis first two, it didn't even have to jump. Williams has to sky for that one, Lavelle two. Done in a battle. One shield win easily. Classy cut from Alex Morgan. Launches it ahead for Crystal Dunn. Turning on the Jets. Dunn just does enough to keep it in. Crystal Dunn. A driven ball straight into the chest of Sari Van Beenendal. That would have been one for the highlight reel. Dunn winning it. Morgan finding her. Again, you're right back doing a lion's share of offensive work as well. Pass cut out by Julie Ertz. Alex Morgan is a right back, even if just for a few seconds, Julie. <laughs> Noteworthy. You, you get a sense of how fluid this team is, though, you know? Players end up in different parts of the field, especially in that front three. They seem at times almost interchangeable. Morgan giving chase. She'll work from the right flank. Lynn Williams occupying the center. Morgan wanted the near post run from Williams there. Not quite on the same page. I think that's the fluidity, too, of what Vlatko has brought, is you have a little more freedom for that. Dunn works her way out of trouble. Noting as well, Sebastian, you've got a midfield in this Dutch team. It's Spitza, their holding midfielder, Krunin on the ball right now, and Van de Donk. Three excellent players, and the U.S. has just completely shut them down. I mean, it just shows you how strong this U.S. midfield is. We've always known that, of course, but we don't even have Lindsey Horan in the picture right now either. Obviously tested positive for COVID before this tournament, so sadly she wasn't able to join the team. Dahl Kemper heads clear, at least to the edge of the area. Ertz now will thump it into oblivion. Jaylene Howell of Florida State, the player called in to replace Lindsey Horan. Initially called into the camp. I called a lot of ACC games this year. Jaylene Howell plays for Florida State. They won the ACC tournament title and that is a fun player to watch. She has had quite a collegiate career and I think has a future ahead of her in Jalen Howell. Roar wide, couple options in the middle. But the danger for the United States in this game is it's still 1-0. They couldn't put it away with that Tobin Heath across the face of the goal chance early. Tobin Heath had another one early as well. And here's the moment the Mewis family has been waiting for. And there's the Rose Lavelle goal, the only goal of this game, which keeps Holland in it. Look at that smile, huh? You think she's happy to be back in the uh, full national team picture and on the same field as, his, as her sister? And we should mention the same midfield now, yeah, uh, Julie. Right wow, what a, what a story.
coming in for Rose Lavelle. We mentioned earlier Rose has had a little bit of a hamstring issue at Manchester City, and so they knew she was limited to about, they thought 45, so they'll be pleased they got 60 out of Rose. But there is Christy Mewis alongside her younger sister, Sam Mewis. Last time they played together on the national team, 2014. So great to see Christy back and won a title, NWSL title this year. Well, we'll call it the Challenge Cup. I don't know if they called it the title. I think they did, right? With the Houston Dash. How about that Houston Dash team? One of the uh, organizations in NWSL you always kind of wanted a little bit more from. And uh, certainly this year anyway, they've seem to turn things around. We should note the uh, Mewis sisters, just the second pair of sisters to play for the U.S. women. Uh, twins Lori and Ronnie Fair played together in the late 90s. Interesting to hear Sam talk about their relationship, uh, how supportive they've been throughout their professional uh, and even collegiate careers. But going back to their adolescence, Sam says they weren't always so close. <laughs> so <laughs> glad to see that that has uh, changed and evolved. Yeah. That's very typical for siblings. She said, we didn't really get along in high school. <laughs> but now. Sam said that uh, she is the younger sister, was always kind of tagging along with her uh, older sister. She thought that might have annoyed Christy. I'm sure they'll be glad to each be tagging along here for this one. An opportunity to get back into the U.S. national team picture for Christy, and she has really, truly earned it. Um, over the last year, overcoming injury and really turning herself into one of the best players uh, in the NWSL. Tobin Heath standing over yet another set piece. 63rd minute from Neda Breda, Netherlands, excuse me. U.S. playing their first game outside the country since the 2019 World Cup final in Lyon, France. A game they won in a game where they beat this very same Dutch side. 2-0 to score that day, 1-0 to score here. Heath tried to clip it over the top, but it never arrived. Dahl Kemper for Morgan at number 13. Such a key target for the United States atop their formation. And that nine position, we talked about that in the beginning of this game with Press in there and how well she's been doing, co-leading the team with seven goals this year alone. She's either had... Mark Connolly pulled this amazing stat for us. She's either, Press has either had 26, wait, what was it again? I'm looking at Well, he's sitting next to me, so I, I can ask him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, she's, she's either scored or assisted in 26 of the last 27 games, Kristen Press. And obviously we know the tournament and World Cup that Alex Morgan had in the nine position, co-led the tournament with six goals, and then absent with her pregnancy. Heath forcing her way into the Dutch penalty area, eventually overcome by a triple team. And then, speaking of triple team, the third threat in that nine is the Car is Carly Lloyd, who we've also seen, especially a re-energized Carly Lloyd under Vlad Kwandanovsky playing in that nine. She played in it some at the She Believes Cup and did very well in it. Uh, she's out with a knee injury right now that actually kept her out of the Challenge Cup, kept her out of the Fall Series. Carly would turn 39 at the next Olympics. But all three options in play. And again, we talk about the embarrassment of riches of these United States team. But that will be a position that is going to be one to talk about 
in these next six, seven months before the Olympics. And it's interesting, Julie, we, th we think so much of the number nine for goal scores, but you know, we saw it with Alex Morgan making a great outlet pass for Crystal Dunn, Kristen Press setting the, yeah. up the assist from the nine spot. You mentioned Lloyd at the She Believes Cup. Her best work was passing and, and setting up yeah. other players. So that's really something that's demanded of that position over under Vlatko Ananovsky. Sam Mewis charging ahead. Christy with the touch, one of her first of the match. And I would add defensive presence. I mm. mean, that's huge for Vlatko Andonovsky. He was so emphatic about how much work Carly Lloyd was doing for them based on the stats they were collecting from games defensively. And how much better Kristen Press has become on the defensive side as well. Sauerbrunn, a rare foray into the opposition's final third. Drops it for Dunn. Christy Mewis wearing the number 22, her sister Sam in the number three. Offside flag up as Alex Morgan gets in behind. Substitution coming for the Netherlands. And a potentially very dangerous one for the United States. Shanice van der Sanden set to come on. She'll replace Lynette Bierenstein. And the Sanden plays for Wolfsburg in Germany. This her 81st appearance for this Dutch national side, and she is so quick. Fresh legs, a lot of pace. She's going to try and stretch that U.S. back line. Just over 20 minutes to play here at Rat Verlech Stadium. O'Hara, Morgan, Williams back to O'Hara. And her touch just abandoned Kelly at the very end, but a beautiful series of one touch passes leading to attack there from the U.S. A reminder, the MLS playoffs continue Sunday. Another doubleheader. First, Orlando City hosting New England Revolution. Kickoff 3 p.m. Eastern on ABC, followed by Columbus Crew taking on Nashville SC at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Columbus dealing with some COVID absences could affect that match. But for now, everything's still on. A game streaming live, of course, as well on the ESPN app. Morgan back to goal, manages to find Heath. Heath and Vilms, one-on-one. -on -one. Tobin on a right foot. Cuts it in. Tobin still on that right. Just a little off in that final third, and to be expected eight and a half months in for sure. But still, so much success off that defensive press. Every time they're able to get numbers around the ball, the Dutch team cannot handle it. Bend it on wide for Wilm. She'll get it back now, the number 10. Brunin turns, fights her way through one challenge. Now ahead for Roard. But the Dutch striker clearly in an offside position. Kelly trying to step her up just off, as you can see. Kelly O'Hara on the right side, taking that little half step forward. Quiet day so far for a listener, huh, Julie? Quiet day, I was just thinking too for Lika Martins. Through here for Christy Mewis. Mewis one on one. Christy the shot. Goal! Welcome back, Christy Mewis. Yeah. 
and one of the first players there to congratulate her. I mean, how much pride there must be with the Mewis family right now, mom and dad at home watching. Look at this ball in though by Lynn Williams. Such a beauty of a touch. Perfectly placed. Mewis having the presence to say, okay, I'm gonna keep this low. I'm gonna drive this far post. Takes a little sneak peek there. Oh, how about that for your first game back with the national team in over six years? Mm. And the first person to greet her and congratulate her is her younger sister, Sam. That is tremendous. Thought that smile was wide when she came on the field. Boy, after that goal, was she <laughs> grinning. Uh, and with good cause, scoring just nine minutes, Julie, after she'd come on. And really not many touches. To be able to finish that off as cleanly as she did gives you an indication of the year she's had and how well she's been playing. The breathing Perfectly room the U.S. was very much looking for. That is Christy Mewis' second international goal, but her first since 2013. Julia, you have to say, it's, it's rare that a player goes that long outside the national team picture and then works their way back in. I mean, it, it is yeah. really remarkable. Yeah, and, and as you said it before, I mean, the things she's had to fight through with the injuries and a time away, and then obviously Houston Dash having this remarkable run this year at the Challenge Cup and their success. I mean, it just felt this lift all around that team. And Mewis, Christy, such a huge part of that. <laughs> what, what do we call this, Julie? <laughs> That's a little tango. Yeah, it's a dance, <laughs> right? A dance. Couldn't do that if they tried again, but... Uh, <laughs> Strange moment there in the Dutch penalty area. Troublesome moment here, Lika Martins. Nearly picked out Jill Roard. Becky Sauerbrunn there to break it up. Ertz, big challenge, just does get a touch and springs an American attack. Sam Mewis running at the Dutch defense. She's got Heath to her left, Morgan in the middle. And just as Heath hit the brakes, Mewis hit the pass. All of that started by the defensive play. Again, how many times do we say this year in and year out above Julie Ertz in that holding defensive center midfield position? Breaks up so much, so much attack and starts then so much attack for the United States. I know you mentioned it, Julie, in the replay, but how about that assist from Lynn Williams too? Just a class touch. And the timing of that run by Mewis. It, and it is, we should say again, I, and I, to think about going eight and a half months as a player without really playing a high level game like this is so hard to do. And then for that first game to be against such a good team. Van Dalken probing ball. Dalken for playing it safe, out of bounds. Deep and throwing for the Dutch. Not to shy away from it because U.S. Soccer had a chance to say, nah, you know, we're not ready physically, mentally. We haven't had the minutes. We haven't been able to get them in with COVID. And yet, Vlatko Andonovsky said, no, let's do this because if anything, it will expose our weaknesses. It will show us where we need to be. Substitution then in the 75th. Crystal Dunn will give way to Emily Sonnet, the 27-year-old. Plays for the Orlando Pride. Also going to get our first look at Sophia Smith. This is exciting. Her senior national team debut. She'll be a part of the Portland Thorns. And the only player in this group to be born in the 2000s. Uh, these kids keep getting younger. Uh, Mitch Purse set to check in as well. Okay, 
cannot wait to see Sophia Smith with the U.S. team. We saw what she's done with the youth national teams at the under 17 and under 20 levels. We saw what she did in her two years at Stanford. And that was with a terrible injury. Broke her ankle her freshman year, halfway through her freshman year. She fought back from that, helped lead the team to the 2019 NCAA title. Good fight in the corner here. Purse Mewis double teaming Vanderdonk. Now and Purse looking calm at that right back spot. Martins lays it off for Hoonan. Van de Sanden, so dangerous. Trapped in a corner here. Martins, one on one with Williams, cuts to the middle. Spitz's pass picked off by Mewis. Mewis running the U.S. counter, ahead to Sophia Smith. Touch got away from her and the Dutch clear. Mentioned uh, Mitch Purse came on. She replaced Kelly O'Hare at that right back spot. So you had both your outside backs replaced and done. Kelly O'Hara sonnet in at that left back position. Purse at that right back position. Sophia Smith in for Tobin Heath on that left side. If you get to shout out Stanford all the time, can I shout out Montgomery County, Silver Spring, Maryland, where Mitch Purse <laughs> is from? A uh, hotbed of um, youth soccer, but really girls soccer. Uh, dominates the, the Washington, D.C. area. And Purse, one of the legends coming through as a youth player. Oftentimes, Julie, we kind of throw the stats out in, in soccer, but I mean, <laughs> that tells that. you a story, doesn't it? 13 right. shots for the United States, zero uh, for the fourth ranked team in the world, the Dutch. Yeah, the U.S. were thinking, we're going to figure out where we are in this game and expose, you know, get exposed with some of our weaknesses. I think the Dutch are thinking, oh my goodness. This is what the U.S. team looks like after eight and a half months off. Van Donken trying to cut around Purse, no dice there. Obviously the U.S. just taking a lower block, content to say, all right, you keep the ball for a little bit. We'll stay organized behind the ball. But then they find their moments when that penetrating pass comes in, they pounce. And that's where they've had some of the success with the counters. And Duncan heads it out of touch. Lynn Williams applying the pressure. She'll put it back in play quickly. Purse. Trying to turn out of trouble. Very many options. Purse still on it, and we'll go all the way back to a listen air. Morgan forcing the turnover. Credit to Spitza. Wins the ball right back for the Dutch. Janssen. Line splitting pass to Martins. 
Sophia Smith in the 11 charging down. Films on that far side. Called for the foul. You can already see her explosiveness. If you haven't seen much of her, she is lightning fast. And got some swagger to her game. I think Julie is a fair, fair way to describe it. Uh, yeah, and, and it's interesting because we said, how are the younger players doing in camp? You know, because he doesn't ever want to talk about that. He won't say like, oh, this player's doing well. This one's not, of course. But how are they? And he says, you know, they, they've been doing well. He says some of them, you know, most of them not quite have found their feet in terms of a little bit timid, which you expect, you know, a younger player coming into a camp like this. Uh, and especially having not had many minutes. But he said Sophia Smith in the last day, this was on Wednesday we talked to him, the last day has just come out of her shell. You can see it, the potential and running at players and making players. And, and that's what you saw at Stanford. I think it was actually a surprise to Stanford even that, you know, after her sophomore year, she declared to go into the draft with NWSL. First pushes past Van Donken there, got held up, but no call from the center ref. Bits under extreme pressure. Christy Mewis harassing the Dutch number eight. Netherlands though still on it. Two nothing, same score as the World Cup final. In the summer of 2019, Americans beating the Dutch in that game to claim their fourth World Cup title. Jill Roard. Kroonen. Spitza. Vilms drops it for Van de Sanden. Van de Sanden double team there. A little bit too physical of an effort from Sophia Smith. She's called for the foul. Opportunity here for the Dutch to send some numbers forward. And Sonnet not pleased with that call either because they know this is a dangerous position for set piece for Holland. Don't want to be giving these up in the waning minutes of a game. But really, if you're the Dutch, you have to be showing some more urgency. I know it's a friendly, but if you're the Dutch, you're thinking, OK, what can we get out of this game? Start sending some players. Morgan heads away at the near post. Vilms. Dutch desperate to get a shot on goal. Give a listen there, any type of work. Well, Sophia Smith not being quiet about coming onto this match, Julie, that's for sure. I think the, I think the Dutch players are going to remember her. Here's that second bite at it she was trying to get. Sam Mewis called for the foul. Take that moment to remind you, Syria, I'm now on ESPN News Sunday. Kickoff 6.25 a.m. Eastern time. Got to wake up early. It's worth it. Lazio taking on Udinese from the Stadio Olimpico in Rome, Italy. A reminder as well, all Serie A matches this season streaming live on the ESPN app. Van Donken. Takes her time. Probably shouldn't have. Morgan picks off the pass. Turns at the Dutch defense. Well intercepted by Dominique Janssen. One of the stalwarts in this Dutch back line, the number 20. Van de Sanden, one on one, trying to turn on Becky Sauerbrunn. Emily Sonnet shuts that down with a double team. So many unknowns as you look going forward for this team as well. Obviously, everyone hopes the Olympics happen next summer, July of 2021. There are plans for a January camp with this team. February, she believes. Nair under some pressure for the first time tonight. Keep 
But again, if you're Vlad Wondonovsky, I think you take a lot of positives from this, Sebastian. Ready to spitz up. The number eight for Holland, standing over the ball. Seven targets just outside the penalty area. Netherlands desperate here. Cut into this American lead. They may be in trouble now, though. Lynn Williams, one on one. Look out. Just ran out of steam. Credit to Films there for breaking it up. You can see it's just not as tidy as it typically is, and understandably so again. And Duncan to Hroonen. Again, the Dutch, plenty of time on the ball, but no penetration to show for it. Alyssa Nair hasn't had to made a save yet tonight. Could there be one coming now? Van de Donk, spinning like a top. Unable to shake Sauerbrunn. Now Mitch Purse joins in. Martins collects. Dutch throwing bodies forward. Counters on for the U.S. Van de Donk. Nice turn from Roark. Deflected out of bounds. Corner kick. Becky Sauerbrunn. With the perfectly timed intervention. Really the most dangerous look the Dutch have on all night. Van de Donk just slipping that seam into Roark. Great defensive pressure, though, by Sauerbrunn to recover. You think about the number of looks on goals, though, really not much that Nair has had to do tonight at all. Our day, their night. Alex Morgan winning yet another header, this one in her own defensive penalty area. Balls just gets over Julie Ertz there. No worries though, as a listener gathered. Jill Roar checking out of the match. I it was Katja Snois. 24-year-old plays for Bordeaux, who has replaced the 19. Janssen, given plenty of time. Looking for Snoyce right down the middle. Finally, some type of action there for a listener. She paid the price, coming out to the very edge of her box. An alert play from the American goalie. Only four caps for Snowy's, four goals in those caps. She's been really good in their Euro European qualifiers coming into this. Jaylene Howe about to check in for the United States, also getting her first cap for the United States. She'll play alongside Christy Mewis there. It'll be a like for like with that Sam Mewis coming out. Howell from Windsor, Colorado. So is Sophia Smith. So two debuts in the <laughs> same day for two players from the same hometown. Purse. Williams. Morgan. Alex Morgan. Yes! Up. You could almost see the assistant referee going, I'm so sorry to have to do this to you. Midge Purse starting this all off, a beautiful ball in. Lynn Williams again playing the role of provider, and it looks like, oh, it's so close, but it looks like just a lean in. Oh, with Alex Morgan, that would have been her 108th international goal. 
which would have put her at fourth place all time for the United States, but still getting herself in a great position, finishing it off. She'll be pleased with that. Julie, I know that this has been a year without as much action as usual, but we should note the U.S. has allowed one goal in the entirety of 2020. Uh, this will be their eighth shutout and the seventh with Alyssa Nair uh, in net should they be able to finish it off. May add another. Sophia Smith, a well-taken shot, but won't trouble Van Veenendaal from that distance. And, you know, you look back on that Alex Morgan goal call back. I mean, that's one that even, you know, the team would be rooting for her to get. Obviously, Alex would have loved to get that. So She'll great love this. to see her back. Beautiful long ball just outside the range of Lynn Williams' speed. <laughs> and there ain't like, much that's beyond that range. Of, eight and a half months ago, I would have been there. Plenty to work on then for this Dutch national team. Arjen Voeding, the man you're looking at now. He's the top assistant for Serena Fiechman. Called away at the last minute. Couldn't be with the team today due to a pressing family matter. Little more than hopeful balls forward late in this match for the Dutch. Sloppy clearance could lead to something. Nope, Christy Mewis there to clean it up and now lead the counter. Mewis with time and space. Two options to her left, one to her right. That's where she'll go, Lynn Williams. Mewis again. Morgan. Touch got away from the American number 13. Jaylene Howe knocks it down for Becky Sauerbrunn. Not a misfired pass there, intentionally put out of play. As Danielle Van de Donk, one of the best number 10s in the world, pays the price for dancing with Julie Ertz. That play again started by that tackle from Julie Ertz. The work she puts in in that defensive central midfield role. You can't say it enough. Well into stoppage time here in the Netherlands. Home side, seeing one of their leaders limp off the field. At the tail end of what we have to say, Julie, for this Dutch side, with all they've accomplished in the last three, four years, has to be a disappointment. Yeah, especially as they have. Obviously, it's a challenge globally for everyone, but they have been getting in more games. They have been playing some Euro qualifiers. They have been playing with their clubs. I think it's going to be a reality check to them of how much growth they still need to have going forward. They've already qualified for the Euros, have their final qualification game against Kosovo on December 1st, and they're in. But a stark reminder that even the U.S. without any games is head and shoulders above most of the world. They're the final whistle from the Romanian referee, the United States, 2-0 victors over the Netherlands. The same exact score, Julie, as the World Cup final in the summer of 2019. Not quite as much at stake today. Still, what'd you make uh, of the U.S. performance? Uh, I mean, so many positives given what we've been talking about all game with 2020. Rose Lavelle getting one, Christy Mewis getting one in her return to the United States. Alex Morgan almost getting one uh, and just getting her back on the field, getting some younger kids in there. And so Sophia Smith and Jalen Howe, I mean, there's 
as we've always talked about with the United States, they have so much depth and so many players fighting to come back into this. It's going to be interesting these next months because that roster for the Olympics obviously cut down to 18. But a great challenge to have for Vlatko Andonovsky. The future and present of the U.S. women's national team then very much on display. Again, the final score from Breda Netherlands, 2-0 to the United States. Rose Lavelle, the opener in the 41st minute, assist from Kristen Press. And then in the 70th minute, Christy Mewis with the second goal, Lynn Williams providing the assist. For Julie Fowdy, I'm Sebastian Salazar signing off. Once again, the final score, the United States 2, the Netherlands 0.